What's up YouTube? Welcome to Winter's Camp. We're in Canada. So we're here at Algonquin Provincial Park. We're at Joe Lake, one of the East Arm campsites right now and we got plenty of firewood that was already left here for us so it's gonna be great first night's gonna be nice because we're just gonna be able to settle down right away and not have to worry about getting firewood I say it's around five o'clock right now we're just gonna get a fire going and maybe if we get hungry later make something to eat Well guys, Missy and I are pretty beat. It's been a kind of a long busy day for us. Made uh, two trips on the portage and did everything over again pretty much. Getting everything back in the boat and so I think we're just gonna chill by the fire for a little while and we'll probably call it a night so we'll see y'all in the morning. So we kind of skipped breakfast and decided to come out here and check out the lake. Um, we're maybe looking for a potential next camp spot. The one I reserved is actually quite a bit of ways from here. If we decide to go there, it might just be a, for one night it just increases our distance to have to travel back to canoe lake i don't know if we got if we'll have the gas and the muscle to do it all one day but it really just depends on the weather and if the wind picks up or that's what really makes it hard to paddle is, you know having a headwind the water's glass now, it's beautiful. So we're gonna hope, hopefully uh, stay like this for the duration of our trip and we're gonna go back to our campsite now and cook something to eat. So we'll see y'all later. We just had a terrific close call back there. So we had the DSL art out on the canoe and we saw some loons. Missy said, hey, they're like right next to the boat. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm trying to get a shot of these loons and there's a, some stumps and stuff over there sticking up. The wind picked up. It kind of slammed us into one of the stumps. Almost tipped the boat over. That would have been bad news, man. I mean, we're, we were about 250 yards away from camp when it happened, so um, we probably would have froze our butts off for sure. That was a really close call. But we did get the pictures of the loons, <laughs> but I forgot to turn the mic on, so I'll just throw in some cheesy music for that part. But anyway, we're back. I'm going to make some breakfast. 
more coffee. All right, so we did bring a camel back a hydration pouch with us on this trip, but it was only three liters. And realistically, that's not enough for three or four days worth of camping. So I ended up getting this uh, Survivor filter from Amazon. And I watched a couple YouTube vids on it. Um, so we're going to try it out and get some lake water with it. So hopefully uh, it's worth its weight in gold because if we get sick, we're pretty much screwed, right? So this is like a little bobber uh, that keeps it off the bottom so you can filter water and not a bunch of dirt, but it will filter uh, finer particles. Uh, so let's go try it out. So the float, as you see, just keeps off the bottom so we're not siphoning whatever's on the bottom of the lake here. Get a good flat spot there. Cool thing is it has a little clip here for you to clip. And so that thing won't fall down in there and give you a hard time or come out on you. It takes a minute to get it primed. But once you do, it starts going pretty quick. Let's look in there and see what we got. I see a little bit of aeration. But should I taste it? Tastes like water to me. Is that a moose? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh my god. Oh, shit. Oh. oh. That's cold. Your body would probably get used to it after about a minute. Making us some hamburger prime rib burgers with some baby bell white cheddar cheese oh yeah First catch of the day. It's, uh, using a MEPS. Got him on a MEPS spinner. Just a little smallmouth bass. So at least I'm not going to get skunked here. Well, we're going on our third day here and we're getting ready to pack the canoe up and go to a different spot for one more night. I can tell Missy misses the pets at home because she's been baby talking all the squirrels out here. So, so we're going to get her loaded up. I'm anxious to show you the next campsite, so hopefully it's a good one. 
Well, we're here at the other campground, which was about three and a half miles away from where we were originally. The wind has picked up quite a bit, and I'm glad we got here when we did. Head wind pretty much the whole time here. Yeah, it was it was bad. The wind started to calm down a little bit, but we're not going anywhere tonight. We're gonna stay here and just enjoy the this nice campground. I'll show you guys the site here in a minute. We get some stuff unpacked and set up. So. We got a nice little natural bay for our canoe over here, so that's kind of cool. Hey, I could sit on that rock and take a bath. Missy said she can sit on this rock and take a bath. Cool. Look at that. So, all right, guys, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna take off here for a minute. And get our some, bird followed us. Get some stuff unpacked. We're kind of bored, but we can't really do anything because it's too windy. I really wanted to take the canoe out and check out the other campsites that are out here but if the wind has been non-stop since we got here it's crazy so uh i don't know hoping hoping within the next hour or so it's already 6 30 so who knows hoping within the next hour we can go out and do something but i doubt it usually by this time of day the winds the winds die down but i don't think so I got some firewood cut up for tonight and I'm gonna finish off some of the some of these pine logs I found. They need to be cut up a little bit more. And got this Fisker's handsaw, it's pretty cool. Uh, you can saw it this way and you can lock it in like this. I like the ergonomics. Hopefully the wind dies down because with it being windy it's just chewing up our firewood, so that's not cool. So please die down wind, please. So I, I'm pretty loyal to Fisker's brand. I, I got the Fisker's hatchet here. I can't remember the model. I think it's like the, I want to say it's the X23, I think. It doesn't say, but the, the older model Fisker's would have the model number on the handle. I have an, uh, I think I have the X27 uh, ax at home. I've had that one for a very long time. That's been a workhorse. I use, uh, Gerber knives also, which believe it or not, it's it's Fiskers also. All these products are uh, you can get get the good ones made in the USA. Gerber's this one here. I got the Gerber strong arm. I just got this knife. I really haven't put it to the test for anything other than just using it, the spine of the blade for a fire starter on a on a ferro rod. But this one's made in Portland. Oregon USA it's, it came super sharp out of the box you could take the hair off your arm with it pretty easy but uh, I'm pretty loyal to the Gerber and Fiskers brand like I said I've, I've not ever owned a Fiskers arborist tool you know that had failed me we even have a pair of Fiskers shears at home that we use to, to cut branches and stuff with and they stay pretty sharp so yeah if you guys are you know, into burning wood for your house in the winter time, you know, to, to heat it. Uh, definitely check out the Fiskers axes. They're, they're really cool. They're super light, you know. People say, oh, you gotta have a lot of weight, you know, to cut them big logs. And I say, no, you don't. Um, I've, I've taken down some pretty big, uh, I've split some pretty big hefty pieces of a uh, tree with a Fiskers in no time at all. They have a lifetime warranty. And they have a lifetime warranty. Uh, if it breaks, uh, they will place it for you on the spot, no questions asked, you know. And a lot of bush crafters, you know, they're like, ah, oh, you know, you gotta go old school and carry a wooden hatchet or axe with you. Well, that's true. If it, the handle does break, 
in the wild you can usually find a way to to rig it up and stuff but that's the thing about the the fiberglass handles on the Fiskers of I've had plenty of missed strikes and I've not had a single one break on me but I've seen stupid stupid videos on YouTube about you know uh, how much abuse can a Fiskers take and I've seen people go out and bang them against freaking high voltage you know towers against bare metal I'm like well of course it's gonna break if you're gonna purposely try to break it but I'm telling you right now if, if you're splitting wood and you have a missed strike you know and, and you hit the handle it's it's wood's not gonna do a darn thing to that fiberglass handle but uh, they're, they're really cool product I like them easy to sharpen too uh, it's got a really soft blade so make sure whatever you're chopping you have a, a good chopping block don't chop wood you know straight on the ground um, if you go straight through it and you hit a stone you're gonna put a big nick in the blade and it's gonna take forever for you to, to work that little nick out so check them out guys Fisker is good stuff all right so Missy wanted to do kind of like a campfire talk here and thought it'd be a good idea so we took a little vacation to come here to Canada and and try some different kind of camping. More uh, more secluded and very primitive. It's very very primitive. <laughs> and you, there's no neighbors out here to be had. Well, across the lake, you could. We have this whole lake to ourselves tonight, so we're out here on Little Doe Lake. And uh, we took about two hours to get here from our other campsite earlier. And how many miles did you say we traveled? From? I think we paddled three and a half miles. Okay. And then to travel back to the car is how many miles? It's going to be about seven miles. So we're going to pack up early tomorrow and try to get out as quick as we can. That way we can make our nine and a half hour drive back to Indiana. Yeah, we're both gonna be beat. It's, you know, this is what I like to do, you know? I mean, never really had a chance, uh, you know, back in the day to, to do stuff like this, but people grow up, you know, I've, any other day. Years ago, I would probably be sitting at home playing video games and stuff, and. Eh, I don't have time for that stuff. I've, I've played enough video games in my life to probably be done with it altogether. Because whatever whatever's out there, I'm sure I've I've played some some genre of whatever new game is out there. So I've I've played them all. So this just being out here, I think uh, teaches me other things than hand-eye coordination, I guess. So. And for me, it's getting out of my comfort zone and trying something that I've never really done before. Last time I was in a canoe was about 15 years ago, and I dumped it. So I hadn't been in one since. So I was a little nervous. Yeah, she did pretty good. I was really impressed. I think the hardest part for her was getting in the canoe and... I was scared to, to get in it, but once I'm in it, I'm okay. You know, there's some there's some guidelines and and uh, what to do and what not to do is when it comes to being in a canoe. You we know, normally go to Colorado in May because our anniversary is May 21st, so we always, not always, we've missed a couple, but we always try to do something extra special. And so, I don't know, we just started watching camping videos. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, I don't know how I stumbled across Algonquin. I think it might have been watching one of my self-reliance videos. And and, uh, and then you got Tumble Home. And, of course, Joe Robinette's been... These aren't... This isn't new territory to, to him whatsoever. And 
I thought I'd give it a shot. I, first thing I did was Google Maps and see how long of a drive it would be, and then I had to figure out what I needed to do to get a passport for her and I. And we we went to the, the border and we got checked in pretty painlessly. I thought maybe that since we had a car full of luggage, that, you know, we'd have to pull over and and let customs do all their paperwork, whatever. But they didn't go through our bags, and not even one. No. They just asked us a bunch of questions. I was pretty honest with the guy, and I, I could tell that those people at the border, border patrol, they take their job seriously. So, I mean, I didn't want to joke around with him, you know. I, he, I could tell he took his job seriously, and and uh, so I, I respected that, that, you know, he took his job seriously. So I had to be serious right back with him, and I appreciate that. They didn't give me a hard time and they let us be on our way. Yeah, it's been a great trip. I have no regrets. I might tomorrow, paddling six miles. You know, speaking of comfort zone, like <laughs> people, I hardly take my shirt off in front of people, but you know, I've been on this diet since January and I'm starting to be a little bit more comfortable without my shirt off, you know. So that little snippet I did with me uh, taking a little lake bath, that's, I don't know, I really didn't want to do that on camera, but she kind of suckered me into it. But but uh, I'm starting to feel better about myself, you know. And, you know, I guess I shouldn't really care what people think about me regardless, but but I kind of kind of take my health a little serious nowadays. and. I think coming out here is is, uh, is helping me, you know, try to to help my health, you know, in the long run. We did a lot of work to get here, you know. We we did a lot of paddling. We really haven't ate that much either. In all honest, I mean, I think being on the keto, we're not hungry. So, but yeah, it's. I'm full of energy. I didn't even take a break the whole time we paddled here. I mean, it was three and a half miles of straight paddling for me and I let her take a break but the winds were picking up sometimes and there's there was no, no time really to stop unless she wanted to get thrown off course or get spun around or whatever but the winds have calmed down quite a bit the winds are have kind of changed elevations they're more wisping through the treetops now instead of sweeping down through here at ground level yeah I was getting kind of worried about these winds but, uh, we're gonna have to get up early in the morning and and hit the water. The sun has a lot to do with the the atmosphere and how the winds are. I know once that sun comes out, and, uh, it does funny things to the to the jet stream. It definitely has an influence on on the wind. That's why usually when the sun goes down, the the winds go down with it. I'm no weatherman though. I just know from experience that. The sun definitely has something to do with the winds. But right now it's, it's just absolutely beautiful. It's, it's starting to quiet down quite a bit. Yeah. This is a huge lot too. It is. It's pretty big and there's some trails that go back that way and but I'm not... We, I don't know. I don't have any jingle bells on me to make noise. We so walked pretty far back there though. I don't want to... All the way to the other side. I don't want to spook a bear or have one spook me for that matter. <sighs> yeah, we have not seen a bear. Our first night was hilarious because we, we heard all kinds of scurrying around out in the woods and I think I would wake up every hour and just yell. If he wasn't waking up, it was me waking up. Oh, she would ask me, did you hear that? I'm like, no. But then I'd wake up and I'd say, hey, did you hear that? And she'd be like, I didn't hear anything. So. That's a little bit of para paranoia because we don't have bears in Indiana. There's no bears in Indiana. There's no moose, so no. There's two ginormous creatures that we don't have in Indiana. That yeah. you know, I can go camping, you know, and sleep fine in Indiana, you know, because we don't have any of that. But but the only thing I worry about is is snakes and I haven't seen any. Of I don't think Canada is host to a lot of snakes anyway because of the harsher winter climate that they have. I, I couldn't see snakes being a big issue out here. All we've seen is chipmunks and birds. Chipmunks and pine squirrels. And some 
Balloons. Balloons. Balloons are pretty cool. Yeah. And some uh, white-throated sparrows. Love their little song they play. Sound like my brakes when I come to a stop a little bit. <laughs> but as far as other wildlife, yeah, we really haven't seen anything. Uh, I thought the balloons are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. They kind of remind me of a penguin, you know. They will dive underwater for a little bit. And sometimes I'll see them dive underwater and I won't even see them after that. They just kind of go off and do their thing, I guess. I think I heard an owl flutter in last night. Yeah, I think I heard a, uh, probably an owl. Some of the white-throated sparrows, they wouldn't shut up till about 10 o'clock. It's kind of funny. I will say that I got cold last night. So I'm definitely in the lookout for a new sleeping bag because my sleeping bag kind of stinks. I actually have a military bag, it's the patrol bag, which is good for about, I think, 40 degrees. But uh, both nights I've slept fine, I didn't get cold at all, I didn't have any long johns on or nothing like that. But the second night I slept with a, a hoodie on and I could slip my sleeping pad inside there and, and still mummy up inside there if I have to. But her bag, it weighs almost six pounds and it's, it's crap, it will not keep you warm at all. Yeah, it's more like a nice, cool summer bag down to about I would say 60, at least 50, 60. 50, 60, yeah. yeah. I try it's to comfortable. Camp. It's the most comfortable sleeping bag. That but thing as far says as it's rated for zero, but I've taken that thing out camping in 20 degree weather and it froze my butt off. Yeah, it's not good for the cold. And I don't know why I keep taking it out, but then I've attempted to do some 30 degree weather camping and still no bueno. With that, with that thing, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Just will not hold the heat. So I think we're gonna watch the sun go down. I might throw the line out there a couple more times, but we're really digging this trip. And uh, right now is about when I would love to have a marshmallow. No, no. Dang, we don't have any marshmallows. Diabetes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. hopefully. Uh, I'll catch something and be able to show it off on camera. If not, whatever. I might do a little good night video here uh, toward the end. But all right, now it's really calming down. I can fish. I might go over there and fish. Earlier it's too windy. This has been my spot over here, but I might go over there on the other side. On a peninsula, it's pretty cool. I'll show you guys. Yeah, let's show them. Yeah, so this I, is an awesome lot. So I, Sit back for a second and we'll show you what this lot's all about. I'm showing off the lot now. Oh, show off that. How freaking cool is this lot? I mean, it's just freaking awesome. The sun's going down behind us. Um, showing off the marmot over here. It's freaking cool tent, man. I love it. So easy to throw up. 
set up, sorry. Well, anyway, um, just, just an all out good old camping lot, man. But plenty big enough for a, for a, a couple come out here and do some camping. Uh, if, if you're down for that, I mean, bring some buddies with you and go fishing. This is where it's at, right here. Good times. Making some good memories right now. It seems like they always falter. But how the hell should I know? And it always seems to disappear so quickly you can't see. Can somebody tell me, where does the time go? I got a bigger pile of questions than really I could ever need. There's no explaining these. Well, I'm about ready to head out of here. It's about 7.30. We got up pretty early. And got our stuff packed up. It's pretty calm out here right now. I think it's going to be a, a great paddle back to the Portage store. And we'll get some footage of the canoe ride back. I think it's going to be a good day. What do you think? Yeah. So hopefully uh, we'll get there if the wind decides to pick up. So, all right, guys, have fun. Conversation differently. I know it's kind of one sided. It's so obvious the answer, it's just a question I believe that nobody's asking. But what the hell do I know if everyone's so one?